This week in AI, the alleged first AI software engineer, Devin, launches, Google's new core update penalizes AI-generated content in search result pages, concerns over outdated performance benchmarks begin to rise, India's government to regulate AI model releases, and an OpenAI Musk update speed round. Hi, good evening, and welcome back to the AI Almanac, which is a weekly briefing of the top AI advancements or finds for the week. My name is Veronica Hylak, and I'm a startup owner and AI consultant. The theme for this week is Devon AI Launches, the AI developer assistant breaking new ground and occasionally its own code. And that's where we'll start today. So advancement number one, the alleged first AI software engineer, Devon Launches. An AI research lab cognition launched Devon this week, the first ever fully autonomous AI software engineer capable of writing, deploying, and debugging complex code with just a single prompt. Setting the stage for what could be the future of coding, Devon stands out in comparison to the competition by taking on the end-to-end -end development responsibilities, meaning both the front end and the back end together, something existing AI coding assistants like OpenAI or GitHub's Copilot could not accomplish. Devon allegedly can complete a wide variety of development tasks, including entire applications and websites, from the source code to configuring databases to setting up the server-side logic, etc. Taking a leap forward in comparison to its competition, it can also scan for errors in the code it produces and, of course, standard debugging. It also can do AI model fine-tuning, real-time progress monitoring and testing, debugging major existing repositories so it's not limited to working on just new projects, and setting up the deployment of models, including computer vision and deep learning projects. My initial thoughts, AI code generation tools have a little bit of a sore spot in my heart because my brother's first startup called Sidekick.dev attempted to accomplish what Devon claims. My brother's team decided to abandon the project in October after many VCs were weary of investing in a tool that big companies like Microsoft and GitHub were already attempting to accomplish. However, I'm a little bit more pessimistic about Devon. Primarily, I believe Cognition did an amazing job creating the social media buzz of the first AI software engineer with their announcement, but their product to me looks like a badly edited demo video that are spliced together. Um, and somebody that was trying to build a product with like RAG and auto GPT and chain of thought techniques, they don't appear to even have their own model, which a lot of people have speculated that this is just a GPT wrapper and maybe the press was for money grabs. I'm not saying that that's true and that is speculation, but their website is also absolutely awful. And I really hope Devin didn't make it because if Devin made their website, it's like the most basic HTML website from like 2002, arguably earlier. If that's the best they could do, it makes me a little bit concerned, especially from a coding company. This is probably one of the more important announcements to keep up on this week, um, but knowing what I know about code generation startups and the fact it's not even publicly available for use yet, it's really in an early access by extreme request. I'm not really convinced that it does what it says it does. Nonetheless, the article said that Devin solved 13% of open GitHub bugs unassisted, which isn't insignificant, especially because Claude 2 and GPT hover at about 4%, and that number is only gonna arise from here. Also this evening, I was at a DC Tech and VC Venture Coalition happy hour, and I had two colleagues tell me about Devin and made some jokes that I didn't catch it on my AI Almanac, so I thank them for telling me about this before I recorded so that I was able to communicate it to you guys. Advancement number two, Google launches new core update that penalizes low quality content made for search algorithms instead of people. In the beginning of March, Google began rolling out a core update to its search algorithms, aiming to target the surge of low quality content by significantly downranking them in SERPs. The focus is on reducing the visibility of pages that are optimized for search engines at the expense of offering creative or highly valuable content to real people who are actually using them. SEO experts are saying that this core update is a slam against AI-generated low-quality content that is starting to flood the internet. But it's interesting because Google only subtly addresses the issue of AI-generated content without explicitly mentioning AI. In their release, they used the phrase, content by automation. But come on, 
<laughs> we all know what that actually means. If you want to understand how a court update like this works, Google gave an explanation of it being like you having a top 100 movies from 2021 and updating that list for 2024. Some movies may come onto the list, some may fall off, some may rise higher up, some may fall lower down. Experts are kind of seeing this as a slam against content by automation, as Google signals its commitment to reduce the bulk AI content that is flooding the internet. It's also coming at a time when researchers have started to publicly state the significant decline in Google's search quality. Google has stated that this update will improve search quality by 40% and it will take approximately three weeks to complete. My initial thoughts, I use ChatGPT a lot. However, I really can't use it for any sort of content generation that requires thought or innovation. Anything that would require me to think out of the box, it's boring, generic content. And honestly, after using it for over a year, it pretty much is the same exact structure every single time. Many people have seen a decline in respect for such professions like a copywriter, thinking that they can automate most of their content generation by running it through an LLM. With this core update, I believe those anti-copywriters are about to get a rude awakening. When their pages are significantly downranked because of their bulk AI generated content that has no sort of creativity in it, they're going to significantly affect their ranking, which will take a very long time for them to gain ground on again. Google reassures us that there are no sort of new requirements for this update for those who have consistently focused on creating that high quality content. Their statement hints at the fact that you can probably continue to use AI generated content just in conjunction with a probably highly skilled human crafter. Content creators, if you're still worried, Google's guide for creating human first content is in my blog. Advancement number three, concerns of performance reporting and accuracy as model performance benchmarks are three plus years old. So every time new models are launched, you usually see several tables with these percentages comparing the performance of this new model to the others on the market. Of course, the logic is pretty simple. How else can you evaluate the performance of this newly released model in comparison to the past ones and just how much better it is? The benchmarks used to evaluate these models which were research focused and over three plus years old, predate the invention of modern Gen AI tools. So ultimately, they're not accurate in real world application for how we're utilizing AI today. Even though there are plenty of impressive benchmarks like GPQA, which focuses on PhD level questions like biology and chemistry and physics, there's not a benchmark that represents the everyday use of models, causing many experts to say that there's an evaluation crisis within the industry. My initial thoughts. Before I transitioned into software, I was heavily involved in the music industry in New York City, even working for one of the top three record labels in the world. And this reminds me of a similar issue that the music industry faced around outdated music copyright law. For 15 plus years, the entire industry was operating off of copyright law from 1998, pre-streaming and really pre even how we use the internet nowadays to set compensation rates for artists. The problem is that the statute emphasized downloads and outright purchases. Because streaming is neither of those things though, it's just simply playback time. Spotify was operating in a legal gray zone for a good period of time to their benefit and they were able to actually set the compensation rate that they wanted to give the artists. Because Spotify wasn't technically breaking the law, they got to choose how much they were going to give artists. It tended to be about 0.006 US cents per play, but it fluctuated at will. So Spotify was able to say, hey, you know, I don't want to really pay that much this, this month or sometimes I'll pay a little bit more, uh, compared to 9.1 cents per download until the introduction of the Music Modernization Act in 2018. Why is this story relevant? The fact of the matter is this AI reporting benchmark evaluation crisis is absolutely nothing new in the history of advancement. Regulatory laws and guidelines usually take a while to catch up. So I'm still grateful I came across this information this week for me to know that when I see those performance metrics, they're not necessarily an accurate reflection of what I will actually encounter when I use those models until those benchmarks are updated. Advancement number four, speed round of multiple OpenAI and Elon Musk updates. There are a lot of mini updates around Elon Musk and OpenAI and they're kind of related. So rather than creating a bunch of sections, I'm just gonna do a quick mini speed round of the really important things because that's really all you need to know. Let's see how fast I can do this. First up, Elon Musk announced on X Monday that he will be open sourcing Grok. 
his proprietary chatbot by XAI. As last week, I mentioned that I was a little hypocritical that he had his own AI remain proprietary while he filed a lawsuit against OpenAI to try to force them to open source it. I feel like this is a strategic announcement in order to address some of that backlash. This announcement was made only 11 days after filing that OpenAI lawsuit. Next, OpenAI responded to Elon Musk's lawsuit in a public statement written by its co-founders to offer their own narrative on the situation. The post stated that not only did they realize it would take a significant amount of resources and funding in order to accomplish their original goal, but that Elon Musk was in fact aware of a for-profit structure throughout their engagement and rather wanted, quote, absolute control. They even released his emails to show this. This was their quote. As we discussed a for-profit structure in order to further the mission, Elon wanted us to merge with Tesla or he wanted full control including majority equity, initial board control, and to be CEO. We couldn't agree to a terms on a for-profit with Elon because we felt it was against the mission for any individual to have absolute control over open AI. Last update, Altman announced the return of Altman to its board of directors after his early departure and CEO role termination earlier this year. Accompanying his return are three new board members, former CEO of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, ex-Sony Entertainment President, my alma mater, and Instacart CEO. Expanding the board to eight members, this change followed criticism of OpenAI's previously all-male board and lack of diversity. My initial thoughts, OpenAI's response does shed a different light on the Elon Musk lawsuit for me. But nonetheless, even if Musk did seem in favor of a for-profit model, if they didn't come to an agreement on what that for-profit model would look like, it still could potentially be a breach of contract. What I have read is that Elon's credibility will hinge on the fact on whether or not he can prove GPT-4 accomplished AGI, as allegedly in the founding documents, it stated that if AGI was achieved, it would have to be open sourced. I have not confirmed that, but that is what I have seen and read. The rest of the updates were just good to stay on top of, but not much to expand on, so let's just save ourselves the time. Advancement number five, India begins to regulate AI models. India has introduced a significant shift in its AI regulation policies, moving from a previously hands-off stance to now requiring government approval for the launch of new AI models. The new advisory also mandates that AI companies label the potential unreliability of their AI outputs and to prevent any bias, discrimination, or threats to electoral integrity. While the Deputy IT Minister admits that this advisory is not currently legally binding, it signals a future of tighter regulation by, quote, strongly encouraging companies to comply. If I was an Indian company, I would definitely comply. This advisory came after the IT Minister expressed discontent with Google Gemini for its response to a question about the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. When asked if Modi was a fascist, Gemini referenced unnamed experts who have accused Modi of enacting fascist-like policies. The Indian government warned Google that such answers breached multiple Indian laws, including criminal code, and it highlights the fact that the government has increased scrutiny over AI-generated content related to political figures. My initial thoughts, Gemini's output issues strike again, this time spiraling an entire country's government to tighten AI regulations for political motivations. The IT minister stated that the response in question was from a month ago, which was before the Gemini scandal, if you watched a couple weeks ago. So I wonder if he would be content with the answer Gemini would give after the model has been adjusted since that scandal. In either case, this is a dangerous baby step towards government AI regulation and censorship. It's a move that could easily slide into tighter control of AI usage and development and outputs, which could in turn further make us question the truthfulness and the validity of those responses even more going forward. And that's it for this week. Please remember to like and subscribe and even comment what is the favorite thing that you learned this week. And I will see you all next time.